In this video, I'm going to show you how to use OBS to live stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time for free. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. One of the most popular videos on my channel has been how to use a third party service like Caster or Restream to send your live stream to multiple destinations. OBS, which is free open source software, only streams to one destination at a time. So in order to go to multiple destinations like Facebook and YouTube, the only practical way to do this was to use a paid service. But not anymore. Thanks to a new plugin from OBS called Multiple RTMP Outputs Plugin, you can now send your stream to as many destinations as your computer and internet connection can handle. And that's an important point. Before I walk you through step-by-step -step how to set this up, let me first just make this part clear. This isn't just happening by magic. Your computer is now doing the work that these paid services do. So you need to make sure your internet connection can handle the additional bandwidth. And depending on how you use the plugin to generate the multiple streams, that your computer can handle the extra encoding. We'll look at these things as we go. Each destination you send to will add its bitrate to the total bitrate your internet connection needs to be able to sustain. So for example, if I'm streaming to Facebook at 4,000 kbps, and I add a second stream going to YouTube at 4,000 kbps, I'll need an internet upload speed that can sustain 8,000 kbps of streaming. Depending on your internet connection, this may or may not be an issue. At home, I have a fiber connection that is 100 megabits up and down, and so 8 megabits sustained upload isn't going to be an issue. Here at the church, we use a cable modem connection that is dedicated to our live stream, but it only has 14 megabits upload. My rule of thumb guide is that you want twice the upload bandwidth as the bitrate you are streaming, so it definitely puts it into an area where I'd want to do a lot of sustained testing before I'd be ready to rely on a 14 megabit connection to stream 8 megabits. To get started, we first need to download and install the plugin. I've got a link to it in the description of this video. And also, be aware that this plugin is only available on Windows. Once you have it downloaded, when you open the zip file, you'll see two folders, data and OBS plugins. What I've found works for me is to just drag each of these folders into your OBS Studio folder. Those folders already exist, and Windows takes care of merging the contents of the plugins into those folders. Once you've copied those folders over, launch OBS and you're going to go to View Docs and select Multiple Output. Now you can move and place this dock anywhere you want in OBS. I like it up here next to my canvas. The way this plugin works is that the additional destinations piggyback onto the OBS encoder. So your first destination should be configured in OBS just like you normally would. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. We'll go to Settings and the stream page. I need to enter in my stream key from Facebook, so we'll go over to Facebook and get that. Click Live and Use Stream Key, and then I'm also going to click Use a Persistent Stream Key. What that means is I won't have to copy this key into OBS every time I stream. Now Facebook and OBS will continue to use the same key until you tell either of them to change that. Next to the stream key, click the Copy button and that copies the stream key to the computer's clipboard. Back in OBS, I'll delete out whatever was in here before and paste in the key that's on the clipboard. A few other settings that will become important in a minute. I have my canvas set to 1920 by 1080 and my encoder for Facebook will use X264, which uses the computer's CPU. And I'm rescaling to 720 at the encoder and sending a 4000 kbps stream. Click OK, and now if I were to click the Start Streaming button, I'd start a live stream to Facebook. To add a second destination for YouTube, we'll click Add New Target in the plugin. In the Settings dialog, give it a name. I usually just name it the destination that I'm going to, so YouTube. Now I need to enter in the RTMP server and key. So in a browser, go to your YouTube account and click Go Live. And then go to the Stream page. I'm going to copy the stream URL and paste that in. 
then copy the stream key and paste that. Now we need to make a decision about our encoder settings. If I leave the video and audio settings as get from OBS, what will happen is the plugin will take the already encoded video that's going to Facebook and just duplicate that and send it to YouTube. So in that scenario, I'm doubling my upload bandwidth requirement, but I haven't increased the encoding load on my computer. The encoding load stays the same because I'm still just encoding once and sending that to two destinations. But if I switch this to an encoder, and I'm gonna select the NVIDIA NVENC encoder, which will run on my graphics card, that means I will have my Facebook stream encoding on my CPU and my YouTube stream encoding on my graphics card. I can now enter a different resolution, we'll send 1920 by 1080 to YouTube, and a bitrate of 6000. What this means is, if your computer can handle it, you can send a 720 stream at 4000 kbps to Facebook, which is the maximum that they will accept, and then also send a 1080p stream at a higher bitrate to YouTube. So let's see if this works. I'll start my Facebook stream by clicking Start Streaming in OBS, and in Facebook we'll see that show up and click Go Live. So Facebook is now live. Then I'll click Start on my YouTube destination, and on YouTube we'll see that show up, and YouTube begins streaming as soon as you send it data, so there's no longer a button to go live like you have to do in Facebook. While those are streaming, let's look at a couple things. If I go to Task Manager and look at Performance, you can see my Ethernet connection is sending 10 megabits per second. That's the 4,000 kbps for Facebook and 6,000 for YouTube. Again, just reiterating the point that adding destinations adds to the bandwidth your internet connection has to be able to handle. Back in OBS, if I go to the Stats menu, this usually is a great way to tell what's going on with your stream. You can tell if you're dropping frames from rendering, which is just handling the video before it gets to the encoder, or if the encoder or your network are causing you to drop frames. But in this case, it's really only giving me stats for the Facebook stream. You're not going to get a complete picture here. You're going to need to use these stats in conjunction with the task manager looking at your CPU and GPU to really tell how well your computer is keeping up with your stream. And that's it. You can now stream to multiple destinations in OBS for free. Be sure and subscribe to my channel if you found this useful, and give the video a thumbs up as well. Until next time, bye.